In less than a week into the new school year, tragedy strikes a Baltimore City school. Another young life cut short in Baltimore as a student is gunned down outside Mervo High School during dismissal this afternoon. Because we can't keep seeing this over and over and over again. Uh, there are too many, too many young people uh, that are being harmed in our city. We have team coverage tonight. Keith Daniels is looking into how city leaders will address the violence moving forward. The Rue Vignaraja is standing by live in our studio to address Mayor Brandon Scott's comments and his overall crime response. But we begin with Riel Creighton and an update on tonight's investigation. Riel. Kai and Maxine, a murderer here at Mervo High School, how the first week of school ended. The tragedy incredible enough to bring out the mayor, the police commissioner, and the city school CEO to talk about the stunning nature of this and the trauma that it is no doubt unleashed. That murder happening right here in the parking lot at the school. 2.30 in the afternoon, broad daylight. Police say a student from another high school showed up here, confronted the victim outside. There was a brief exchange before he pulled out a gun and shot him. Police say that suspect then ran. City schools police already on the grounds, chased the teen and caught him within minutes and recovered that gun. Police say he is now in custody. Meantime, several sources, witnesses telling, witnesses telling us that this all unfolded in front of students. You can just imagine how many there were out here as school was being let out. A 15-year-old telling us that he saw the victim up close as he was laying on the ground and that he had been shot in the head. There was also a lot of panic in the school and in the neighborhood. One woman who lives just doors down, not wanting to show her face, but describing the moments after the shooting, saying she could actually smell the gunfire. It smelled like firecracks, fireworks. I mean, but I'm like, what does that smell? Someone shooting. And I just saw the kids like dispersed all over the place. They were just running from here and there, left and right. So I'm just looking like, and I didn't see any, anyone. I mean, just kids running, that's it. And they were just hollering. Now, police have not identified the victim or the suspect, but a source close to this investigation has identified both of them to us. We've learned that the victim is a 17-year-old 10th grader here at Mervo High School. The suspect, again, we've learned also 17 years old, a student, again, from another high school. We are not identifying him pending charges. Reporting live at Mervo tonight, Riel Creighton, Fox 45 News. Riel, thank you. Well, over the past six years before COVID shutdowns, the number of violent incidents in Baltimore City Schools had been trending down. We're talking about violent acts that led to suspension or expulsion. On the surface, that appears to be good news, but numbers don't always tell the full story. In 2017, City Schools Police Chief Akil Ham said that this system was no longer arresting students. Instead, focusing on building positive relationships with students so officers could learn more about the problems before they happen. And at the time, Ham said that strategy was working, but Project Baltimore looked into the most recent data available from the 2019-2020 school year. We can see over 4,500 students were expelled. Nearly two out of three came for attacks, threats, or fighting. 160 were expelled for weapons and another 96 for arson and explosives. More than a dozen guns were seized from city schools over the past school year, including four ghost guns. But a recent city council meeting to discuss school safety didn't address weapons in schools. Tonight, Fox 45 News is taking those concerns to city leaders and once again asking who needs to take charge to protect Baltimore school children. Keith Daniels joins us live with their response. Keith? Well, Kai, like Riel told us, City school police officers chased down that suspect at the shooting, at that shooting at Mervo High School, and tonight taking another look at school officers and what they say the big change they need to help keep schools safe. This is school police. They're on the parking lot and they need a medic for a victim. He is shot in the head. Put out a citywide broadcast for me. We have students everywhere. Gun violence and Baltimore City Schools. A deadly combination at Mervo High School Friday. A student killed the suspect, another student from another high school. City Councilman Robert Stokes. It's unfortunate this happened the fifth day of school when school just opened up. Certainly unfortunate, but maybe no surprise. The warning bell sounding early on about guns and school violence. 
Councilman Stokes, chair of the City Council's Education, Workforce and Youth Committee, called a hearing just last week to discuss current school safety measures and what steps are being taken to keep students and staff safe. But after more than a two hour hearing that Thursday night, there were no questions about guns and city schools. The issue virtually ignored. We didn't hear much about guns. Well, that will be probably at the next hearing. We, we're going to talk about guns in school. I, I'm going to bring it up. Stokes instead focused on the agencies and their reports that night. But one week later, deadly gun violence at a city school. After that shooting, we pressed Stokes once again on the issue, including the effort to permit school resource officers to be armed while inside school buildings. Are you going to be pressuring sc the school board, the school officials to do more about that issue? No, that has to come from an atmosphere. Right, but will you be I, pressuring, will you be pressuring the local school board to pressure those I, people in I, I will call each individual on the school board and have a conversation with them about that. Absolutely. But at the shooting at Mervo Friday, Sergeant Clyde Boatwright, the city schools police union president, says armed officers did respond, able to take swift action to apprehend the suspect and recover the gun because the incident happened at dismissal when officers can wear their weapons. What happened if that would have happened in, inside the school? Right. Our the school police would have been unarmed. Well, for now, Baltimore City is the only jurisdiction in Maryland that does not allow school police to be armed inside school buildings. We're live tonight, Keith Daniels, Fox 45 News. Keith, thank you. Well, former city and federal prosecutor Theru Vignaraja is here now to continue our coverage. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, we heard from Mayor Brandon Scott this afternoon. He seemed distraught, of course, over the shooting at his alma mater. Let's listen to his comments. We don't have to be that way. We can be better. We don't have to wait for someone else to do something. We don't have to point the finger and say who else is going to do something. We don't have to wait or post something on social media about how bad things are. Get up. Get out there, get involved, get off your ass and get involved with these young people because we can't keep seeing this over and over and over again. Frustration there and we have heard similar sentiments from the mayor after shooting. So let's talk about how he's calling on residents to get involved in the crime fight. Do you believe the mayor is sending a strong enough message to those committing the crimes? Look, I think the mayor is full of good intentions and all of our thoughts and prayers are with the victim, the family, his classmates, but people are just sick and tired of just words, of these pledges and promises and calls to action, using curse words to show your frustration. That doesn't make things better. And I think people are looking for an actual change in policy, for an actual change in results. And I just don't know that any of these murders shocks the conscience of our city leaders anymore, whether it's a, the, a senior being killed in the basement of a church or a, a 10th grader being killed on the fifth day of school outside during dismissal. None of these things seem to actually wake our leaders up to do anything. And until we actually see actions and not just thoughts and prayers and words, I don't think the city's going to be satisfied. Uh, Theroux, the mayor did promise to cut crime by 15% each year when he was campaigning. Uh, we know that hasn't happened. Do you believe the mayor, um, what, what's happening here in this regard? Why do you think that hasn't happened? You know, I, I think he is looking to residents to step up and do the work that city leaders are supposed to do, that city law enforcement, that police and prosecutors are supposed to do. It doesn't work this way. You don't just call out to the community to step up and do a better job, and then all of a sudden violence goes down. That's not how it happened in Baltimore when we had murders below 200. It's not how it happened in cities like New York or Chicago or Detroit, where murders actually were brought under control because of leadership, because of action, not words, not thoughts, not prayers, not calls to action. And I think so long as the mayor sticks to just talking points, things are not going to get better. All right, Theru Vignaraja, thanks so much for joining us in studio tonight. Thanks for having me. Good evening. Well, that brings us to our question of the day. Do you think Mayor Brandon Scott is sending the right message to criminals in the city? So far, 96% of you who voted say no. You can weigh in by heading to foxbaltimore.com slash vote. Fox 45 News is committed to covering Baltimore's crime crisis and the impact on our city. We'll continue to hold our elected officials accountable for their promises to address the crisis. You can always get the latest information on air and online at foxbaltimore.com.